Hi everyone, and welcome to Stellaris Federations. So, this is a video sponsored by Paradox, and we will be taking a look at the upcoming Stellaris DLC, Federations. It's coming out on March the 17th, and it includes a few major new features, such as the Galactic Community, which is basically the Galactic Senate. So now, if you want to, you can be the Senate. But we will be checking out the other major new feature, Origins. So, picking an origin in Federations gives you a unique backstory with a unique start. And there are some really interesting origins. The one we will be taking a look at is the Tree of Life, which is an origin unique to the Hive Mind. And so, I made a Hive Mind Empire, and it gives you a Tree of Life on your homeworld, which grants you some major bonuses to population growth, food, housing, and some society research. It also makes your colony ships more expensive, so there is a downside, and if you lose it, you will take major penalties, so that's the other downside. And I also assume you will struggle with planets that do not have the Tree of Life, meaning planets you didn't settle yourself. Anyway, in an attempt to get the most out of this, I made an empire with, where is it, extremely adaptive, which gives us plus 20% habitability, and also ascetic, which will give us further plus 5% habitability, and minus 15% pop amenities usage, because with how quickly we'll grow, we will probably run into some amenity problems. And I also picked up empath, because this will make it easier to do diplomacy as the hive mind and perhaps I'll get a chance to do some diplomacy. I would like to, we'll see about that. The main goal is to check out the Tree of Life. I did pick up Solitary and Sedentary, because Extremely Adaptive requires 4 points, and you only got 2 unless you pick up some negative traits. So, let's get started, shall we? This should be quite interesting, I'm looking forward to it. So, here we are. First of all, let me show you the actual Tree of Life, the most important part of our empire. And here it is. Plus 15% population growth speed, plus 10% society research from jobs, plus 10 housing, plus 4 maximum agriculture districts. And each new planet we settle ourselves will get plus 10% population growth speed and plus 5 housing. So that is still quite significant. However, it will cost me 1,000 to actually build a colony ship. Normally, it would cost me 500 without the Tree of Life origin. So, let's pick some research right away. Maybe we can get some more growth speed. Yes, we can. Let's get that right away. Slightly more minerals, because we'll need that as well. And more energy credits from technicians. And let's take a look around. We are right here. Decent. Let's take a look. We need to find some planets to colonize. Hopefully we'll find a few in our general neighborhood. And here's the first planet already. Arctic World, 14 population. Yeah, that should actually be pretty nice for us, because we also got an Arctic World. This is actually perfect. Size could have been a little bit better, but it's fine. I'm not going to complain when we found a nice planet in literally the first system we're surveying. That is definitely a good thing. I will, however, grab another science ship in order to survey our surroundings a little bit faster. Maybe even a third one, but two science ships should be enough. Here it is. 14 population. Let's take a closer look. Nothing overly interesting in here, just a regular planet. As for our tradition, I think we'll go for expansion first, because that has some nice bonuses. It will start each new colony with one additional pop, I will get even more population growth speed, and then we can go for synchronicity, to pick up some more amenities, and also increase stability. And also, we will reduce Empire Sprawl from Pops by 10%. So by the time we are done with both, yeah, we'll have time to decide what's going to be third. Unlock Expansion first. Okay then. 
And also, adopting everything in expansion will allow us to build one additional district. That might also come in handy. Speaking of which... Yeah, let's maybe build another mining district, because I will need minerals early on. Challenging, 223 research time. Yeah, okay. We got another science ship, so I suppose I can afford to wait for that. We'll grab another guy here, and let's maybe go in the opposite direction. Right here. And finish improving everything in our home system. Some more energy. We'll need all of that. Not a whole lot of resources here so far. And here's another planet. Tundra World. Well, this is perfect so far. It could have been a little bit bigger, but this is fine. This is the perfect planet type for us. Now I just need 1000 food to get my first colony ship. Alright, first tradition is going to be one mind. New colonies start with one additional pop. And we will be getting our first colony pretty soon. Just need to finish the survey. So, doesn't really matter where we go first. We will settle both. I'm just finishing the last station in my home our system. Is there it is. So let's just go this way, that's fine. We'll get both. And hopefully there will be more. Hopefully we won't have any aggressive neighbor. Because I don't really want to focus on the military this early on. I'd rather focus on expansion, that's kind of the point. Plus free society modifier. Yeah, that's not too bad, I'll take it. Well, we found the first neighbor. No, that's not a neighbor. Caravaneers. Okay, sure. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can do right now. Nope, sorry. We can get back to you later. And we got some alien vessels. I can't quite see how many. Right, let's get our first colony ship. So that's 1000. Here you go. Okay, we can see it's 560 straight. But I can just go around them. And here's another arctic planet. Oh, this is amazing! Size 19. So that's the fourth system I'm surveying, and I already found three planets of my type. That's actually amazing. Strategic resource discovered. Yeah, I won't be able to use that for a while, but hey, we got a strategic resource nearby, and we got a desert planet. That's not as good, however, because I got plus 25% habitability, it will be 45% habitable instead of 20%. I can still settle that a little bit later. More caravaneers. Or is that the same one? No, that's not the same one. Interesting. Well, there's not a lot I can do. I could give them some food in exchange for minerals, but I kind of need food. Because, you know, I need food for my colony ships. Let's settle this one. It's like a tiny little bit bigger. Not that it makes a huge difference which one is going to be first. A great day for the marble consciousness. Done right. 127 engineering. There's our first colony. It will still take a while to actually finish colonizing it. And we'll start with our one additional population complete. right away. Alright, 1000, another colony ship. Waiting for 1000 will take a while. I got several planets to settle already. Here's Our another one. Size 23 Tundra World. Okay, that's the biggest one we found so far. This is really good so far. <laughs> because it's not normal to find so many habitable planets so close. And yes, I do have plus 25% habitability, but these are the best planet types for me. Because I got an Arctic homeworld, and so far we got three planets in the same type. That's really good. There's our new planet, and I can show you the other version of the Tree of Life. There it is. So it has plus 10% population growth speed instead of plus 15%, like I mentioned on the start. It has plus 5 housing instead of plus 10 housing, and plus 2 maximum agriculture districts instead of plus 4? Yes. Society research bonus is the same, though, so that's nice. Society research is definitely going to be our strength. Now, I would like to get rid of these alien vessels, but I'm still waiting to get more ships. 
and maybe some military technologies. Anyway, here's another colony ship. I could actually wait for this one, because I'm already working on it. That might be best, because that's a really big planet. Yeah, let's go grab that one next. The survey should be done by the time we get there, and by the time we finish the outpost in the neighboring system. And we just finished expansion? Oh no, not quite. One more tradition. And then we'll finish expansion. Alright then. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. Magnetic disruption modifier. It's not on my homeworld though, it's just on my second planet. For 60 months. Okay, fine, we'll deal with it. We almost got the big Tantra planet. Just need to finish the outpost and then it will be ours. Okay, let's keep surveying in this general direction. I still haven't found any neighbors. There isn't even an option to make Our contact with any, complete. which is probably a good thing. Nobody is going to bother us. And now we can finish expansion. There it is, nice. Which means I can pick up an ascension perk. Something that will actually help us. I can't increase my population growth speed and I don't really want to. Our growth speed is fine at this point. Let's get plus 20% administrative capacity. We are currently at 52 Empire Sprawl out of 60, so I will actually hit my capacity pretty soon at this rate. This seems like the best choice right now. That will increase it to 72. Alright, 1000 again. I had to prioritize food a little bit more because I'm already consuming almost 70 <laughs> and it will keep going up. But yes, another colony ship. And then we can still grab yet another one. We can get two more, in fact, because I can grab that desert planet. But for now, I think we'll take the Arctic world that has 19 size and the, the other Arctic with 14 size. And by the time that's done, I Our might find more complete. Arctic type planets. But this is already quite a few. Our third planet is almost colonized. Just a need a tiny before. little bit more. There, we done. Okay, let's get an agriculture district right away. Because I will need food. Yep, we are consuming almost 80 now. Alright, now we can pick up Synchronicity. Because I might need the amenities pretty soon. And plus 5% stability will be useful as well. Not to mention the plus 20 years leader lifespan is nice. And the leader upkeep reduced by 20% is also nice. So there it is, synchronicity. I am losing energy, yes, but that's fine. I can prioritize energy if necessary. We are fine for now. Hey, we found a natural wormhole. Interesting. Okay, then. Also, 16 minerals just in this we one single system. system. I definitely want to grab that. In fact, let's grab that right away. We are right here. And I still have more than enough alloys and influence. Oh, is that somebody we can make contact with? Looks like it. Okay, let's investigate. That will be our first neighbor. Hopefully it won't be anyone overly aggressive, because I'm not exactly prepared for war at the moment. <laughs> our fleet is not very impressive, as you can see. I have been building some corvettes, but not that many. And it's mine. That's going to be a lot of minerals. Here, plus six from just one mine. And we will pick up... Yep, more amenities. How's the amenity situation right now? We got 14 amenities on our homeworld. Five here, three here, and seven. And that jumped up to nine and 22. Right, so amenities shouldn't be a problem for a while, fortunately. We can focus on other things. Okay, so ruthless capitalists. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. They are a criminal syndicate, which does make me a little bit nervous, but whatever. It's fine. Also, now we can actually maybe do some diplomacy. They don't exactly like us too much. Right, let's take a look. Okay, wait too many things happening all at once. Special project. Yes, in just a moment. Let's improve our relations with them. So in order to do that, we need to send our envoy. That's exactly what we are going to do. 
Will it help if we send more than one? Yeah, apparently it will. Sure, let's send all three of them. So our neighbor is right here, does the cartel. Would be nice to maybe claim this system and then build a station. Just in case we end up at war, which we might sooner or later, that is definitely a possibility. Okay, looks like I will not be grabbing this system right here. That's a bit unfortunate, but alright, that's fine. We can still build a station right here, because that's still going to be a choke point. Tropical planet, size 25, that's a pretty big planet. Foreign Empire claims our systems. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll end up at war with these guys. Well then, we better start preparing then. I think I already got some new technologies. Let's just design an entirely new corvette and get rid of this automatic design. We'll get an interceptor. Yeah, no, I don't really have anything just yet. I think something is being researched right now. Yeah, the coil gun. But that's 60 months. Still, we definitely want to build up the defenses here. Let's upgrade that. And then we can get some defense platforms. Hopefully I'll get the coil gun before we end up at war with them. In case we actually end up going to war, I'm going to claim this choke point right here. It will only cost me 50 influence, so not really a big deal. And I would like to get it back, if we do indeed end up fighting. Here, we can make contact with another faction. Let's maybe do that. Okay, here they are. Honorbound warriors. Well... And ruthless capitalists. Trade league. Right. We know a little bit more now. Let's take a look. Yeah, these guys are a little bit friendlier. Let's reassign some of our envoys. I have a feeling I won't be able to get friendly with a crime syndicate one way or the other. I mean, it is a crime syndicate after all. I don't really expect them to be very friendly to begin with. Right now my main concern is being able to defend myself. I just need that coil gun and then more defenses. Both platforms and regular ships. He will have to go through here to reach my other systems. The only exception is this one. But I'll focus on defending one shot I mean, that's assuming they will actually declare war on me, they might not. I do have 1000 food again, but... I think I'm going to wait with another colony ship. Although, I suppose there's no major downside. We can grab this planet right here. No special modifiers, as far as I can tell. This one is the biggest, and it has natural beauty. Plus 5% happiness. But it will be very vulnerable if I end up fighting the crime syndicate. So perhaps that's not the best idea ever. But let's grab one more colony ship, fine. So let's compare our population to our neighbors. Right now we are at 77 empire population. The crime syndicate is at 51. These guys, honorbound warriors, are at 50. And the third empire we made contact with is at 110. Okay, that is quite a lot. Ruthless capitalists. So they are ahead of us in terms of total population, but we are ahead of our actual direct neighbors. And we got the coil gun, nice. What else can we get here? More engineering research from researchers. Yeah, alright, fine. Or let's maybe speed up corvette building. That might come in handy if I have to reinforce quickly. Now we can change our ship design slightly. Let's just build an entirely new corvette. And we'll just grab the coil guns right here. I don't really have much else. I do have some better armor. But we'll grab one deflector. Reactor booster. I guess I could get three deflectors. No, two deflectors and one shield. And that will do. And auto upgrade. Done. And we might as well remove the other design. Don't need it. And let's maybe build our own defense platform. Let's go with a medium for slightly better range. And obviously coil gun, not that I really have any alternative. Some deflectors and some armor. There, 
I guess that will do. Here. And I'll definitely build a few. Right here in this choke point. We are going to need them. They are a little bit expensive, but I did have over 1000 alloys. Yep, I'm already over my administrative capacity. 117 out of 112. So now I will start getting some penalties. But that's alright. I'm almost done with synchronicity. The last tradition in here will actually be quite helpful. If we end up fighting a defensive war. He wants a research agreement. Yep, we can certainly agree to that. Defensive pact. With the honor-bound warriors, our other neighbor. Yeah, I will definitely accept that. Because that will basically counter the crime syndicate. Now, if they attack me, I should be fine. They are actually direct neighbors. Right here. In fact, they have easier access to each other than to me. Especially the guy we just got a defensive pact with. The only connected systems are up here. We do not have any other connections. You know what? Let's make clear these two systems right here. I think I can handle it by now. 560. I will probably lose some corvettes, but I want to see what's going on in here. Non-aggression pact with the trade league. Sure, that's the other guy with high population. I can trade 300 minerals for a technology. Orbital trash dispersal. I do have 1000 minerals, technology so consumed. I'm not quite sure what that technology is exactly, but it's a good trade. Let's see, what does that do? Plus 25% orbital consumed. bombardment damage. Yeah, alright, whatever. Alright, here's our new planet. So this one won't have as high habitability, but it still has 25% stability, so I'm not too worried about it. In fact, I could settle just all of them. That's why I picked up plus 25% habitability bonus. It won't be as good, but it's good enough. Now we can unlock the destroyer. I wouldn't mind getting a few destroyers. And I need a science ship right here. Because I don't have one nearby. They are both set to auto-explore. He's actually coming this way. Alright, let him do that then. And now we can finish Synchronicity, which will also give me increased ship fire rate if we end up fighting a defensive war within our borders. Which we might, still. And we can pick up another Ascension perk. Something that will actually be useful in here. Let's actually pick up Technological Ascendancy. That will give us plus 10% research speed and rare technologies will be more likely to pop up. Works for me. I can also pick up some edicts at this point, because I don't need food for colony ships at the moment. We can pick up a drone campaign, which is even more population growth speed. Leader experience gain, sure, we can do that. I do not need army damage. Monthly energy would be nice, however, I might need my influence still. I'm going to keep my influence. Oh, looks like... Somebody started a federation. Well then, interesting. That's the trade league. Could we maybe join that? That would be nice. I can try. We can't at the moment. Maybe we can get friendly enough with them to join. Because I can't start my own one right now. I'll have to wait a little bit longer for that. Foreign Empire claims our systems. Yes, we know that. We oh look, that's a nice planet. We could certainly grab that. Now I kind of regret not clearing this faster. Is our science ship on the way? Yes it is. And there's a war. I'm not involved however. Oh, now we can ask for association status. Let's do that. I definitely wouldn't mind that. Here, they accepted. Now we got association status with their federation. And eventually we should be able to join I'm looking at my individual planet population just now, and my capital is at 57 pops, and it still has 14 available housing. The plus 10 housing bonus from the Tree of Life is so nice, and then plus 5 on every other planet. This one is at 16 population, and it has 34 available housing. That's a lot of housing. I'm actually thinking a nice trait to pick up 
with the Tree of Life for our empire would be rapid breeders for even faster population growth. There are quite we a few nice combos system. as far as trades go with the Tree of Life. Obviously, the downside is that you have to be a hive mind to use the Tree of Life. But that's fine. I mean, if you enjoy hive mind, then you will definitely enjoy this origin. You can grow some pretty damn big planets pretty quickly. We are still in the early game, more or less. And I'm already at 100 plus empire population. The only concern is empire sprawl. <laughs> yeah, that could get out of control pretty quickly. And this is with increased administrative capacity. So, yeah. But I quite like it. And we got one more planet right here. The Gaia planet. I am already getting the colony ship to grab that. I don't think we have to worry about the crime syndicate anymore. Doesn't look like they will actually be a problem. We can increase our relations with who? Yeah, with our neighbor. Let's do that. I would like to maybe join the Federation if possible. I don't think I can do that while they are at war. Yeah, they must be at peace. Okay, fine, I'll wait until they are done with that. How's that colony ship? It's done. Let's go then. Still need to finish the survey and actually claim the system, but by the time the colony ship gets here, that should be done. Pretty sure it will be done. There. Oh, hold on. Oh, wait. Space Ameba Hunters. I can deal with that. Yeah, that shouldn't be a big problem. I can certainly deal with that. Let's upgrade our ships real quick. I need that scientist to get out of there, however. What is this exactly? Yeah, we can deal with that. Here we are. Let's get rid of them. I'll probably lose a few corvettes, but that's alright. I need to clear the way. We met another AI. Uh, no, actually, that's a merchant guild, not an actual empire. Come on, kill them. Almost done. Yeah, I lost one, two... Two corvettes, three corvettes. Five corvettes. Yeah, it could have been worse. Now we need to claim the system and then actually colonize the planet. And it looks like we might be able to join the Federation now. Can we join the Federation? Let's take a look. Protective. But we should be able to get friendlier pretty soon. Minus 60. And I have to ask them. I don't think I can ask these guys. I can. Minus 9. We are almost there. Improve relations. We are already working on that. We got two envoys working on it. And now we can get started on another tree. I could go for adaptability. Pop housing usage reduced by 10%. Yeah, we could actually go pretty damn tall with the Tree of Life. Because we get a lot of extra housing on each planet. Especially on our homeworld. And this will reduce housing usage. So that will synergize nicely with the Tree of Life, that's what I'm thinking. And we could also further increase habitability. That would make it plus 35% total. Okay, let's go for adaptability then. There we go, now I can ask to join the Federation. Hopefully they will agree. There we go, we are in, nice. That is a lot of notifications, holy crap. I assume we made contact with everyone they also had contact with. Yep. Alright, who are these guys? Let's take a look at how much they hate us. Suspicious. Imperialists again, okay. And these guys, also imperialists. Oh, so they are both basically the same exact type. Well, one is a feudal empire, the other one is a constitutional dictatorship. So here's our actual federation. So this also got changed quite a bit. We got some laws. Right now, Federation centralization is minimal and you can further increase it for various benefits. Yeah, this is quite a lot to digest. But this is an entirely new system and it looks way more interesting 
than previously. There are also different types of federations. Yeah, this is quite a lot. Separate treaties, free migration, kick members, yeah, president decides, so you can be the Senate. <laughs> Invite members, president decides, war declaration, president decides. Vote weight, it can be set to diplomatic, which means more influential members wield more power. Can subjects join? Yes, no. Succession term? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and status change. And you can see the opposition to various changes. Succession type. Rotation? Random. That sounds pretty funny. Challenge? The Federation chooses its president by challenge. May the best win. And strongest. The Federation will be chosen from the most powerful empire, depending on which succession power is chosen. The succession power laws will become available when this law is active. Yeah, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Here's Federation centralization. Some laws are locked and require increasing decentralization to unlock them. The Federation must first level up to gain access to a higher centralization. We can also assign some envoys. Sending an envoy to coordinate matters within our Federation will improve Federation cohesion. Yep, let's do that. So we can send one of them for sure. We can leave the Federation, but we don't want to do that. Our Federation needs 1162 experience before we unlock this level. Federation experience increases as the Federation remains unified. It will decrease as we become more divided. New perks and abilities are gained as new levels are unlocked with experience. Yeah, here we can see what is going to be unlocked when we level up the Federation. I quite like this system, it seems quite involved. And the Trade League guy is currently the president. I don't think I'll get a chance to see the Galactic Council in this video, because I pretty much have to wrap this up. There's only so much I can do in a half hour video. But this was quite interesting. I'm quite liking the Tree of Life. It has some potential to grow some pretty damn big planets, population-wise, very quickly. Because this is still very much the early game. I'm at 125 population. My capital is up to 61 population. I only got three more building slots to unlock. So that was pretty fast. And I still got 18 available housing. <laughs> 10 of which is from the tree itself. The food penalty for colony ships is pretty much irrelevant. It's only 500 extra food. And with all the extra agriculture districts you get on every single planet, you will be swimming in food if you want to. I'm not even prioritizing food all that much, and I got 3.6k. So that is not a concern whatsoever. And there are quite a few interesting trade setups. If I had to restart, I would probably try rapid breeders for even more population growth. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, or a dislike if you didn't, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.